So now for example number two, they want us to figure out what cosine of 1.75 is. Okay, and we'll try this. We haven't had a lot of luck with this. I don't know what 1.75 is. On the unit circle, if I were to do this without a calculator, I might be able to do it by using the unit circle by remembering the fact that cosine of theta on the unit circle is equal to the x value and that sine of theta is equal to the y value. But I have pi over 2, which is about 1.57. And then over here I have pi, which is about 3.14. But I don't have 1.75. Now I might be able to use linear approximation to get a pretty close estimate of what this value is. And I could do it without a calculator. So if I wanted to use linear approximation, I might say, let's let f of x equal cosine of x. And let's let x be pi over 2. So I'm going to set up my linear approximation based on this, and then I'm going to go back into the equation and then try to figure out or approximate what, uh, what my linear function is is evaluated at 1.75. So now to get my linear function, remember that I need f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. So we're going to let a be pi over 2. Okay, So f of pi over 2 is equal to cosine of pi over 2. And then I could do using the unit circle. Because the point right here at pi over 2, this point right here, is, um, wasn't that 0 comma 1 on the unit circle? And we said the cosine was the x value, so that's 0. Does that make sense? All right, so now the next thing I need to do, so that's done, check it off the list. The next thing I need to do is take the derivative and evaluate that at 0. So if this is f of x, what's f prime of x? Negative sine of x. So if I wanted to figure out what f prime of pi over 2 is, then I need to evaluate negative sine of pi over 2. Okay. Well, it's the same thing, but now we said that sine is equal to y, and y on the unit circle of pi over 2 is 1. But I've got this negative sign here in the front, so it's actually negative 1. Right? Okay. Um, so now, if I want to write my linear equation, I would say that my linear approximation is equal to f of a, evaluate, so it's 0, right, plus negative 1 times x minus pi over 2. And I wrote that down, I don't know, sometimes if I explain it it's confusing, but do you guys see where I got everything? If not, raise your hand, I'll explain that. Right. a is pi over 2 f of a is 0, f prime of a is negative 1. Do you have a question or are you stretching? Yeah, I have a question. Okay. Why is negative sine of pi over 2 negative? Well, normally it's 1, right? So let's talk about sine of theta. What's sine of theta right here? Well, sine is the y value on the unit circle. So right here at pi over 2, when theta equals pi over 2, it's 1. But I've got negative sine of pi over 2. So you can think of it like this. It's negative times sine of pi over 2. Does that help? All right, good question. So now if I push this negative 1 through for my linear approximation, I get the linear approximation is equal to negative x plus pi over 2. Now, if you guys were curious, maybe I probably should have done this before, but we'll do it now. Um, pi over 2 is like 3.14 over 2, and uh, 
That's 1.57, isn't it? If you take 3.14 and divide it by 2, something like that. Does that make sense? So, <clears throat> I've got plus 1.57. Well, what did we want to know? Well, what we wanted to know was what was cosine of 1.75. So what we really wanted to know was f of 1.75, but that was complicated. So we're going to approximate that as L of 1.75, which is easy because L of 1.75 is really negative 1.75 plus 1.57. Yeah, it is. Can we do this without a calculator? No. Yes, we can. Um, how do I do that? Well, we know that the, it's going to be a negative, so i got to find the difference of the two numbers. Uh-oh, my, my, my smart board's not so smart. Borrow from here, right? 15 minus 7 is 8. This is 1. And that's it, point. But remember that my answer is a negative. So this is approximately negative 0.18. Approximately. So what did Mr. Adams do? Uh, I said, using all this complicated stuff, that basically cosine of 1.75 is approximately negative 0.18. And I didn't use a calculator, I just used my brain. What can I do to verify that? Graph it, calculate it, whatever. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear this out. And, oops. <laughs> There's like a delayed reaction. All right. So cosine of one, now make sure you're in radian mode, right? Because it's not right. 1.75 degrees, right? We've been using pi over 2 and all this stuff. Uh, let's see what we got. Not bad. That doesn't deserve applause. Yes, you may applaud that. You got a question? That's a great question. The question that she asked, hey guys, up here, pay attention. She asked a great question. She said, why did you use pi over 2? Okay, so if we go back to the original question, they wanted to know, what is cosine of 1.75? Right? Now, Mr. Adams knows the unit circle. And on the unit circle, I could do pi over 2, which is about 1.75, or 1.57, or... I could have used pi. Which one of those two values is closer to 1.75? Pi, pi over 2. Pi over 2. Now what this looks like graphically, here's what we did graphically. If I come in here, this is, this is really what we did. Um, how can that change so much? I mean, I just calibrated the board. Um, graphically, what I'm doing is I've got cosine of x, okay? And let's just zoom out to a trig function. So this is cosine of x, and I want to know what that would look like when, um, I want to know what that would look like at x equals 1.75, right? And so by using this linear approximation, if I hit second draw, and I choose 5 for tangent, uh, and I choose second pi divided by 2, 
I'm using the tangent line of the curve at pi over 2, okay, to approximate that value. Does that make sense? So my 1.75 is about right here. So now when I hit trace, if I hit trace and I put 1.75, well, actually, it's even closer than that, right? See how close it is? You can barely see it, but the original pi over 2 is like right here, and this is where we are. But do you see how the two values are very close? Does that make sense? Did that answer your question? Now, if I would have used pi... If I would have used pi, what, what, what I would have done is I would have drawn, and I could have used pi, but it might not have been as close. So if I did this and I chose pi, I would get another tangent line way over here. So the difference is by choosing this one, I'm closer, but here it's a little bit off. So we just chose one that was very, very close to the original point. Does that make sense?